Okay, this is my quick little introduction to using Zoomit effectively. First off, you obviously have to go and download Zoomit. I've got the web page up here you can take a look at that uh, can be found by your favorite search engine and simply typing in Zoomit or obviously looking at the links associated with this blog entry or with this screencast. Once you've got it downloaded and installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is obviously accept the licensing agreement and then check the options. This allows you to define your hotkeys. I tend to keep the hotkeys exactly as they are, but the one checkbox I want to make sure you all turned on on every single one of your demo machines is this guy right here. Run Zoom It when Windows starts. Because otherwise you'll forget to have Zoom It running when you need to do your demo, and then you'll be stuck without any zooming capability. So, rule number one, turn it on to auto start when you need it on the machines you need it on. Very simple stuff. Now, as far as using Zoomit, uh, I'll give you an example of a bad use and then I guess you would say a better use of Zoomit. So a bad use of Zoomit is an example like this where I want to go off and show someone some settings on a menu that's quite small on this demonstration screen. One thing you can do, and this is the bad way to do it, is you would hit your Zoom key, which is a Control-1, but you notice that it zooms to where the mouse currently is, which is the wrong spot. I want to talk about stuff that's up here. So I move the mouse around to get to the right spot, possibly causing some motion sickness in the audience. Not a very good thing. You want to avoid that. So a better option is to go off and to actually move your mouse to the location you want to zoom, then hit the control one, which is the hotkey for doing a zoom. If you click once, you go into drawing mode and you can see that I've got a red cursor here now. I can change my pen color by simply tapping on the first letter of the color, for instance red, B for blue, Y for yellow, G for green. I'm just going to stick with uh, red, so I'm just going to hit the R back for red again. Personally, I happen to like using arrows for my accents. So if you hit control and shift together on the left hand side of your keyboard, click and drag, that allows you to draw multiple arrows. If you prefer to highlight a box of something, you can go up and then hold the control key down, click and drag and let go, and you got a box that highlights. Some people prefer to go ahead and to do an ellipse instead, or a circle. That one there is holding the tab key down, and then drawing and grabbing to be able to highlight something. You can erase your annotations as you go by hitting the E key without having to zoom back out and back in again. And so that can become quite useful. Again, minimal is better. I prefer just a couple of arrows as I'm talking about something. Zoom back out, go off and launch the thing I'm looking for, go and do some details as an example, create a virtual switch, and then I'll comment and zoom in and talk about maybe this area here as something I want to talk about, and then I can zoom out and then fill in the details as part of the demo. Very quick sort of stuff you can go ahead and do with Zoomit. Less is more. Keep the motion to a minimum. Zoom really only for accent points. And you're good to go. One last handy feature that I like as well is the ability to go off and to do a break timer. That by default is a control 3. And that will just do a quick little countdown timer on the screen that you can increase the amount of time with the up arrow or decrease the amount of time with the down arrow. And then it just starts. So... Kind of handy to bring people back if you have to for a little bit of a break. Thanks a lot for joining me. That was the quick and simple tool called Zoomit and how you can possibly use it better.